I would like to read for our call to worship is a passage from the 15th chapter. Passage, uh, this pa passage says Jesus is talking to his disciples at the Last Supper in the upper room and preparing him for his coming death within the next 24 hours. And he is encouraging, telling his disciples uh, that he is going to be with them. So we'll read through this. But it was written not just for the disciples back then, but it was uh, read for our hearing. And it speaks of a grapevine. If you don't know how a grapevine works, it has a core of a big... Uh, a branch or a big uh, cane that comes off the root and the, conveys all of the energy from the root of the cane. But grapes don't grow on the cane. They grow on little branches that come off the cane and then they have these uh, clusters of grapes. So this is the imagery that uh, Jesus is using in this passage. Let us listen. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Stay connected to me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it stays connected to the vine, neither can you unless you stay connected to me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever stays connected to me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, and he is, uh, if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire and burned. But if you abide or stay or stay connected to me, and my words stay in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will done, be done for you by my Father. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide or remain or stay connected to my love. If you keep my commandments, you will stay connected to my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and stay connected to his love. These things I have spoken to you that your joy, may, that my joy may be in you, just like the sap from the vine, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. You're full from the energy from Jesus. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. And you are my friends. Um, if you do what I command you, no longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. Um, I have called you friends for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go out and bear fruit and that your fruit should stay. So that whatever you ask in my Father's name, he may give it to you. These things I command you that you love one another as I have loved you. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, 
How excellent is your name in all of the earth. The world is full of trouble. It is full of evil. It is full of hate. It is full of many things that do not please you. But you have called us out of the world. You have called, called us to remain in your love. You have called us to bear the fruit that you would have from us fruit of righteousness, fruit of holiness, that people may see this and turn to you. Lord, be with us this afternoon. We pray for your presence with us, the presence of your spirit, that you would anoint us with your love and help us to reflect that love to those, all those to whom you send us. For we would ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome, everyone. I see some faces that we haven't seen in a while. Some for months, Kuta, and some for years, Omanim. And some just the other day. So welcome, everyone. Um, David and I have actually been away, and several of us have been away in St. Louis for our Kukjeson uh, Sangyoe Suryeonhe, or our uh, NAICFM National Conference. And it was a really spirit-filled uh, time of healing and of praying and of worshiping the Lord. So we hope we don't want any of you to miss out on that. So we hope that we may do the same here today. So as you are willing and able, would you please stand and let's praise the Lord together as we look upon each other's faces and know that Christ is in us and with us and among us. Let's go. Putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. Amen. So we, we like things really big in America. We like our um, everything to be big. We go to a fast food place and we order the extra large, super size, big, big gulp, remember the big gulps? Big gulp size drinks. And if you go to Richardson's Ice Cream, nobody orders the kitty size or the extra small. They order the two, three scoop giant monstrosity that is ice cream, right? We love eight passenger Chevy Suburbans for our family, not the Honda Fit where we could barely fit it. A lot of you ladies love your men big and tall and strong. Right? We love to win the $500 million Powerball lottery ticket. We don't really care about those little scratch tickets for free french fries or chicken nuggets, do we? That's tiny. We want to have a big house, a big lawn, big career, big power, big respect, big money. We want to make big changes. We want big miracles. We want to see thousands healed, thousands saved, Red Sea split open. We want them big. And we are really impressed when we hear that so-and-so gave big. Hundreds, thousands, millions to charity or to mission or maybe to church, right? We tend to judge the quality and value and character of a person by the size of his or her giving. In today's passage, Jesus, interestingly, watched the rich put large amounts into the offering basket. Perhaps there were hundreds or thousands of dollars worth of offering into the offering basket. But Jesus proclaims that that poor widow has given more than any of them 
with her two copper coins, two small copper coins. So today we learn that God doesn't want hundreds of dollars from you. He wants 100% of you. God doesn't want hundreds of dollars from you. He wants 100% of you. 우리 말은 주는 당신의 백불짜리들을 원하는 것이 아니라 당신의 백프로를 원합니다. So I like to talk about what God wants from us in three ways. Number one, it's not how many dollars, but how much of your heart, how much of our hearts that we give to God. It's not about how much dollars, but how much of our hearts that we give to God. 우리가 몇불 주께 드리나 아니라 우리 마음을 얼마큼 주께 드리나입니다. Number two. Rich in money is not the same as rich in peace. Rich in money is not the same as rich in peace. 돈 부자라고 마음 부자 아닙니다. And number three. Be rich in peace by being rich in the spirit. Be rich in peace by being rich in the spirit. 성령 안에 마음 부자 되십시오. Amen. So point number one, it's not how many dollars, but how much of our hearts that we give to God that matters. Now, two copper coins in Greek, lepta duo, could be like two pennies. So she said two small copper coins, right? It could be like two pennies in that these pennies are made out of copper. However, two cents actually had more value long ago. Much more than now. You can't do anything with these. But a long time ago, they actually, they actually had value. We probably estimate that two copper coins was probably an equi- equivalent of about $2. Two dollars today. See? One. Two dollars. But even with two dollars today, what can you really buy? What can you buy with two dollars? My son, Caleb... Uh, he loves going to Burger King every Sunday morning with me before we come to church. It's, I know it sounds like a bribe, but this is how we spend quality time together, me and my son. He always wants to go to Burger King and have his Whopper for breakfast. Uh, so I looked up, if I didn't have enough money, what could I buy my son at Burger King? So I looked up the value meal, the value menu, to see what I can get for $2. So I can get an order of chicken fries, or an order of chicken nuggets, or an order of french fries, or an order of onion rings. Just understand the poverty of this widow. The widow had to, so all that the widow had to live on was enough to buy one order from this value menu. That's all she had to her name. And she gave it all up to God. So Jesus said in verse 4, she out of her poverty put in all that she had to live on. She had no idea if she would have any more after this. 이 과부 여인한테 있는 총 재산은 2불 정도였습니다. 이 메뉴 중에 하나 겨우 하나 주문할 수 주문해서 먹을 수 있을 만큼이었죠. 요새 짜장면도 2불 갖고서 못사 먹어요. 2천 원 갖고서 못 사면 한국에 가서도 그렇죠? 옛날 뭐 시장길에서 꽃뭐 꼬치 오뎅, 네? 꼬치 오뎅, 꼬치 하나 정도 아니면 뭐 나중에 알아보니까 뭐 붕어빵을 한 여덟 개 정도 할수 있다 그러더라고요. 네? 그거밖에 사 먹을 수 없는 재산밖에 없었어요 이 과부는. 하지만 주, 그것을 다 바쳤기 때문에 주께서는 사제에 말하길 이 과부는 그 가난함 중에서 자기의 있는 바 생활비 전부를 넣었느니라 하셨습니다. 생각해 보세요. 우리 은행에 우리 지갑에 2불밖에 없었다면 아니면 20불밖에 없었다면 아니 200불이라도 있었다면 이 과부처럼 죽게 다 맡길 수 있을까요? 아니 2불이라도 맡길 수 있을까요? If $2 was all we had left in our bank account, in our wallet, or even let's say $20 or $200, would we be able to turn it all over to God or even turn over $2 to God? 
That would be crazy and stupid. We got bills to pay, mouth to feed, rent to pay, gas to fill. This would be impossible for us to do. But what is a miracle? It is when the impossible becomes possible. It is when the impossible actually happens. So this widow gave all that she had to God when she basically had nothing else left other than this. She gave 100% of herself to God because she loved and trusted God 100%. That's truly a miracle. Not a two-cent miracle or a two-dollar miracle or a value menu miracle, but a big, super-sized, big gulp-sized miracle. 이것이 정말 기이하고 기적인 거 아닙니까? 작은 기적이 아니라 큰 기적. Jesus wasn't impressed with how many dollars she was giving. He was impressed with how completely she trusted God. Now, you don't have to admit it, but I know some of you guys have played poker, right? So in, a, in the game of poker, when somebody with all the chips on his table basically throws it all into the table, he says, I'm all in, right? I'm all in because he trusts the hand, the deck, the cards that he's been handed out. He's absolutely convicted and confident, and he trusts these cards that he's going to win. So he puts all of his chips in, 100%, all in. And that is what this widow is doing today. The widow was all in with God, 100% with God. Where has she found such strength and faith to do such a wondrous thing? How was she able to give so richly toward God when she was so poor? Because she was rich in peace. Number two, rich in money is not the same as rich in peace. Rich in money is not the same as rich in peace. So what about all the rich people who are putting their gifts into the offering box according to verse 1? Well, it's pretty safe to assume that their gifts and offerings were much more than two copper coins or two pennies or two dollars. Belinda and Bill Gates, you know, of Microsoft software. So Bill and Melinda Gates and Microsoft, through their own charitable foundation, They've given over $46 billion so far. Last year alone, they have given away $4.7 billion. That's impressive. And that's a huge and generous giving. We know that. But it's no miracle. It's no miracle at all. For the rich to give lots of money. I mean, look what they drive. Look what they have. Look what they wear and eat. Look at their lifestyle, where they send their school uh, kids to for the school and vacation and so on. The rich can afford to give a lot. They have much, much more for themselves. Bill and Melinda Gates, though they've given away $47 billion, they're worth over $70 billion. They're not losing sleep over this. They are not having to skip a meal to give that kind of amount of money. For charity. 큰 부자가 큰 헌금 후원하게 정말 한게 정말 대단하고 기이하며 기적적인가요? 아니 많이 있으니까 많이 써도 별 부담 없는 거 아닌가요? But what does it mean for a single mother barely making ends meet to give her ten dollars to the Lord? That $10 may be all that she has for her and her children that day. What does it mean for a couple who has gone bankrupt and is closing their restaurant but notices a person begging outside, invites him in, and cooks him a hot meal before they shut down their restaurant? That single mother or that couple, that broke couple, are giving all that they may have left 
in their poor and desperate situation. That's true wealth or richness. Those are really big giving. Those are the big miracles. 간신히 살아가는 애 엄마가 겨우 모은 몇 불을 죽게 받침 아니면 식당 망해서 문 닫는 중에 바깥에 노숙자가 있어서 데리고 들어와서 밥 먹여주는 부부 그런 것들이 정말 귀하고 기적적인지 아닌가요? 작은 기적이 아니라 큰 기적이 아닙니까? The widow in today's passage had given 100% of her life, her trust her love to God because she is 100% at peace in God. But how? 이 과부는 그의 인생, 믿음, 사랑을 100% 하나님께 드림으로 100% 평화를 누릴 수 있었지요. 하지만 어떻게 우리는 우린 이런 평화를 평강을 누릴 수 있을까요? Which leads us to point number 3. Be rich in peace by being rich in spirit. Be rich in peace by being rich in spirit. See, without Jesus, no matter how much we have, we are utterly poor in spirit, in hope, in His kingdom. No matter how much we have, without Jesus, we are utterly poor in spirit and in hope, and in His kingdom. But with Jesus in our lives, no matter how little we have, we are infinitely rich in His Spirit and in His kingdom. 우린 아무리 세상적으로 많이 가졌다 해도 주 없인 너무 가난하고 초라한 팔자입니다. 오직 주 안에 성령의 충만함과 그의 나라의 부유함을 얻을 수 있죠. 이것이 오직 주 예수가 줄수 있는 평화, 평강입니다. Our wealth is the peace that comes from faith and forgiveness and the assurance of eternal life with God, which allows us and enables us to be scandalously, boldly, impractically, foolishly, insanely generous and giving toward God and to each other. We are rich toward God and in God because we have His peace, the Holy Spirit, who assures us in Philippians 4, 6 to 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, the Holy Spirit, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. 아무것도 염려하지 말라. 다만 모든 일에 기도와 강구로 너희 구할 것을 감사함으로 하나님께 아뢰라. 그리하면 모든 지각에 뛰어난 하나님의 평강, 그의 성령이 그리스도 예수 안에서 너희 마음과 생각을 지키시라. See, we can only be rich in love, joy, peace when we are truly rich in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Look, uh, you've heard me say before that I adore and love my wife, right? But I could tell my wife, I love you so much. You're the most important person in my life for me. Right? I could tell her that a hundred times. But if all that she sees is me leaving the house, leaving the children, running out, doing my workouts, doing my uh, church administration, doing ministry, doing everything, meeting up with my friends, hanging out, watching movies, and so on and so on, and no time for anything else, just because I bring her a $100 bouquet in a couple of weeks, will she actually believe that I love her and consider her the most important person in my life? I don't think so. If I say that I love and trust God 100% and yet I spend most of my time hoarding and scheming and obsessing and anxious to acquire more money, more education, more status, more respect, more games, more accolades, more degrees, 
no hundreds or thousands of dollars that I give to the church is going to convince anyone, especially God, that I love and trust God 100%. No. Instead, it's going to show everyone and God that I love me and trust me 100%. Which means that I do not have his peace. I am not rich in peace. I am poor in spirit. But when God said, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. He didn't just send down a few hundred bucks to you. He didn't send down some Benjamins and said, here you go, this is how much I love you. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who was 100% with us and gave 100% of himself, including his own life, for us on that cross. And it is by the Holy Spirit that we believe and trust that God loves us 100% and be truly at what? At peace. Because we finally know how much he loves us. He loves us 100%. His son was 100% all in with us for our sake. So I just want to make this very clear. Please understand that I am not preaching today. I'm not preaching a sermon about how you should give more money to the church. I'm not asking for that. I'm not preaching to have you give more of your $100 bills to this church. I'm actually hoping and pleading that you'll see that Jesus wants our hearts much more than our stuff. Jesus wants your heart, your life, your love, your trust much more than your dollar bills. 주는 우리 돈을 원하시는 게 아니라 우리 온 마음을 원하십니다. We think that we need to have a lot to give a lot to God and to others, don't we? We think that big things, big miracles, big changes can only happen with big money and, and big things, big resources and big power and big influence. But in Luke 9, chapter 9, the disciples, all they had were five loaves of bread and two fish. And they brought it to Jesus. They gave their five loaves and two fish over to Jesus. All that they had, they gave to Jesus. And then what did Jesus do? He fully fed over 5,000 people, including the disciples, and had baskets of leftover. Right? You get what he could, oh. 오병 이어 네? 기적이라고 그러죠 오병 이어 제자들이 오 오병 그러니까 빵 그리고 이어 그러니까 이 생산 두 마리 예? 그거밖에 없었습니다 하지만 그게 다연, 다인 걸 갖다 하나님한테 바치니까 어떻게 됐어요 5천 명 넘게 다 배부르게 먹었잖아요 배부, 배부르게 먹고 얼마나 많이 남았으면 아마 싸갔을 거예요 한국 사람들이었으면 그렇죠 다 싸갔, 싸갔겠죠 right? So, the disciples, all they had were five loaves and two fish. But when they trust Jesus and give it over to him, he can do, and he did do, great things. So Jesus asked today, what do you have right now? Five loaves, two fish, two copper coins, two dollar bills, or a messed up and broken life and relationship, a messed up family, poverty, brokenness, addiction, whatever you have, bring it to me. Give it up to me, all of it, trust me. For I am more than able and willing to take whatever little that you have to redeem them and do great and miraculous things. You will see. The question is, which do you trust? Your own stuff or me? Are you 100% all in? with me? Do you love and trust me with 100% of your life? You know, we pray a lot. And to be honest, we're always praying for miracles. Please heal me. Please help my son, my daughter, my husband, my, my marriage. We ask for miracles all the time. Do you want to pray for truly a big miracle? 
let's pray that God would grant us faith like this widow to love and trust God 100% with our lives and our hearts. 우리가 기적들을 원합니까? 우리가 기적들을 갖다 기도 안에 구할 바에는 정말 큰 기적 위에 기도합시다. 이 과부처럼 100% 주를 사랑하고 믿을 수 있게 해달라고 기도합시다. Because God doesn't want hundreds of dollars from you. He wants 100% of you. Let us pray. Lord, we, um, we thank you because in our blindness, in our brokenness, in our sin, we still cannot and could not see how much you loved us, not just in words, but in everything that you had, including your son. Lord, O oh Holy Spirit, open our eyes. Truly heal us, not just of our physical sickness, but the sickness of our sins that still get in the way of us seeing your love and your grace and your mercy. We thank you and we pray all this in your son, Jesus' name. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, it all my heart, I worship you. This is my desire to honor you, love it all my heart, I worship. I give you my soul 
I live for you alone Every breath that I take Every moment I'm away Lord, have your way in me Lord, I give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you alone Every breath that I take Every moment I'm away Lord, have your way in me 